Now, welcome back. The aspects of oral performance. I want to go there straight. One, repetition. Go back to the poem. I want you to go back to that poem. I want you to look at repetition. How repetition has been done there. Repeat. Repetition. What has been repeated there? If death were not there, where would the inheritor get things? The cattle have been left for the inheritor. Hey, how would the inheritor get things? The, re the roof house has been left for the inheritor. Hey, if death were not there, that has been repeated. Why? Repetition is done here for the purposes of emphasis. How would the inheritor get rich? The bicycle has been left for the inheritor. The inheritor is most lucky. Hey, brother, tell me, if that were not there, look at that. So if you look at that, you will know that repetition has been done by the performer. The performer repeats if that were not there. So you can look at the screen to know where the glimmer. I have put the glimmer at the word repetition and at the end of my explanation. So you don't just write repetition and, and then you quote, if that were not there. What about it? It is important you explain a bit, and that explanation has to be as short as possible. Very, very conclusive. If you say repetition, yes, that is an aspect of oral performance. Present where? Present in the poem or in the song. And then you quote that part which has been repeated. If possible, you go to the effect. Why is it being repeated? Then we have conver conversational aspect. This poem is conversational. Conversational here means there are people discussing about something. People are speaking, speaking here. Some people are being spoken to. So, the persona or, yeah, the presenter, reciter, persona, all those words, that person is addressing the audience. You, at the same time, the inheritor. You are most lucky. The wife has been a wife has been left for the inheritor. Other one, whose daughter would have married you? Where would you live? An iron roof house has been left for the inheritor. The inheritor is most lucky. A bicycle has been left for the inheritor. That inheritor is presumed to be there listening. You are also listening as the audience. So both you and the inheritor are listening. So you are being told, Agile one, whose daughter would have married you? Brother, tell me. Now, another question or another area. How to know if the audience is listening to the song while you are performing it? How do you know that? There are a number of things they do. The audience would be knitting, others would be picking their noses, others would be looking outside, others would be chatting. Others would be operating their phones. They are not listening. Those are called distractions. Distractions. So how do you know that the audience is listening? It is important for you to know. One, by nodding in approval. Nodding your head to approve. What are you approving? The verbal remarks that are in agreement with the speaker's view. You know, you have your own view. The presenter is saying it. You agree. You nod your head. You indicate. That is an indicator. It is a skill. It's a cue. An indicator that the audience is listening. But if you find none of that, 
you know the audience is not listening. Clap to the rhythm. Clap to the rhythm. Then you know, you know, this is a song, and a song has a rhythm. But when we talk of poetry, we tend to deviate from the notion that this is a song. It is a song. So it has a rhythm. And that rhythm has to impress. If it impresses, the audience claps. If the audience is clapping, then you, the observer, will know that the audience is listening. Then you observe the facial expressions. Expressions on the face are facial expressions. If they look disoriented, if they look, you know, an audience can stare at you blankly, but not looking at you. They are deep in thought, daydreaming, and you know that the audience is not listening. Then we have those sighs, a sigh of relief and a sigh of disbelief. The inheritor is most lucky. Where would the inheritor get things? In other words, the opposite of that is that if the death were, if death were not there, the inheritor would not have married. He is ugly. Whose daughter would have married you? So the opposite is shock. And there are some things you don't agree with. Wife inheritance, somebody is dying here so that the inheritor can get a wife. Then you sigh, that sigh of disbelief. Because you come from a community that does not believe in that. So that sigh, when it, that sigh, when, when, when that sigh comes out like that, you will know that the audience is a listening. Now, one more aspect, how to bring out the mood of the song during a presentation. Mood. What is mood? We have moods happy, sad, or we, we say melancholic. And more than that, because happy or sad is not the only mood. Mood is the effect of what has been done to you. Can you go to that room where there is a board meeting and uh, tell me what is happening there? When you come back, I'll ask you, how was the mood? How is the mood of the class? When you told them that there is an exam, how was the mood? It is the feelings, yes, but they have an effect on you. What those feelings do to you is the mood. So how do you bring out the mood? Look, when you want to bring out the bitter mood, so by mentioning bitter mood, there is a glimmer there, you have a mark. I would stress the following words, death, inheritor. I am of the house, bicycle, brother, So for every mood that you mention, you will have to accompany it with the words that you will stress. Two, in a rising intonation. Why? And the rhetoric questions to bring out bitter feelings. So, Naturally, we have the following intonation because this is a WH question. But this is circumstantial. So you ask, in all our skills, we say when we have a, a falling intonation, I mean, WH question, it is a falling intonation. How come in this we have a rising intonation? Why? Well, this is circumstantial. For everything that we do, there is an exception. So exceptions are those that go out of the box or out of the norm.
So here is a situation where we use arising intonation because of the state, even if it is WH question. Why? It is curious. The poem is curious. The poem is critical. The poem is critical. Look, look at that poem. Now I want us to read in the actual text and in the actual rising intonation. If that were not there, where would they inherit again things? The cattle have been left for the inheritor. Hey, how would they inherit again things? In other words, how would they inherit again things? Because if that were not there, the inheritor would get nothing. The unroofed house has been left for the inheritor. If that were not there, how would they inherit again rich? The bicycle has been left for the inheritor. The inheritor is most lucky. Hey, brother, tell me, if that were not there, Aluan, whose house would have married you? So you see, in that case, you cannot fall and say, whose, her, whose daughter would have married you? Whose daughter would have married you? Because this is inquisitive. This is interrogative. A wife has been left for the inheritor. A inheritor. How would you have lived? How would you have lived? Not how would you have lived. The house has been left for the inheritor. If death were not there, how would the inheritor get things? So, it is important for you to learn a few tenets pertaining to the performance of uh, these aspects of literature. The oral poetry, the, uh, the, the oral poetry, the uh, oral narrative, etc., etc. You know, there are some aspects of performance that we've not brought on board. We have not brought on board aspects such as how would you say the words or the last word or the last line in the poem or in the song. We shall look at that, that later in other encounters. I want to remind you to wash your hands. I want to remind you to wash them thoroughly and wear a mask each time you go out. You can notice from the media that the infections are on the rise. Stay safe. Good day.